All right, here we go. Hopefully this is the last leg. All right, I already talked about this. This is step number seven. Um, in order to make this lifelong for myself, um, I have to just re remember that the results are the side effect of um, the self-love actions that I'm doing. Not to be, and I can't get my, let myself get full that the self-love is from the body. Um, number eight, I'm trying to pound through these. Number eight was I let myself get sick of it. The last week I started looking through my old Facebook photos and a lot of them are me overweight and then me wait, who when I've lost weight, overweight, lost weight. And I realized like my life, I'm a yo-yo dieter. Like that's my story or it has been my story. And it was really disappointing. And I saw the pictures when I had lost weight and I was like, man, I want to get to where I feel good like that again. And I have to remember the feeling good is not the body. The feeling good was the work I put in. And that's what's going to take me lifelong. Because even when I get the body or even when I lose weight, the weight that I want to lose, that's not like, oh, yay, I did it. That's my source of fulfillment and feeling good about myself. It's because of the work. And that's what's going to allow me to keep it lifelong. Um, and also, like, looking at pictures, like, of people who are in shape like that it is inspiring to me to see that so the really like letting yourself get sick of it is was a big point for me because it just made me kind of like so fed up and so mad and like here we go let's do this that's how I feel um and number six this is a really good one prioritize weight loss um, my husband and my dad both were telling me you know because I'm in the gym or I have been in the gym a lot and really working on like, I want to grow butt and muscle building. And my thought process was, you know, if I just focus on building muscle, I eat in order to do that, I need to eat my lean body mass in protein each day on top of the weight training. So I was eating my, my lean body mass is probably like one, 110, 120. So I was like, okay, I'll go for 120 grams of protein each day. And then that means three meals, about 25 grams, I think, 25 grams of protein. And so I was trying to make sure that I was eating it every three to four hours. And my husband and my dad were both like, you know, that's good that you want to lose weight, but or good you want to build muscle, but, you know, it sounds like you really want to lose weight and that should be your, your first priority. And I didn't want to hear it, but the more I sat with it, like they're right, like the sooner I can make progress on the scale, the better I'm going to be feeling about myself because I'm putting in the work towards it. I feel like I sound kind of contradictory, but yeah. So now instead of eating every three to four hours and trying to get that protein in, I'm just going to focus on eating when I feel like I'm going to start getting hungry soon. Because if I wait till I'm super hungry, then I'll eat like everything. And that's because your blood sugar drops so low that you're just like eating until your blood sugar comes back up, which takes like 15 to 20 minutes. So you're just sitting there eating for like 20 minutes and then you think, okay, now I'm satisfied. So that's something, that's something I learned the hard way over the, over the past 10 years is don't wait until I'm like starving to eat, eat once I feel like, oh, okay, I'm going to be getting hungry soon. Then I eat a lot less in one sitting and I eat a lot less like total calories throughout the day. And I hope that's on this one. Um, Oh, no, it's not. Okay, I'm trying to go by this paper. Um, and then, like, really not getting, like, too boggled down with the diet. I've been on, like, so many different diets, like, tried so many different things. But they never, I never stuck to them because they're diets. Like, keto, all of that stuff. I didn't stick to them because it's a diet. And then, you know, like, I want to go out and enjoy stuff. Like, I'm just, I just don't stick to them. So, now it's just going to be... I know my portions. I know what how big my plate should be. I know when I should be satiate, satiated. Um, and like right now, I'm not eating the best. I'm not eating like chicken and broccoli. Like this morning or just a second ago, I had a quesadilla. Like, But I made quesadillas with gluten-free tortillas and um, chicken with salsa um, and cheese. And so it's not like perfect eating, but... I know I just had like 33 grams of carbs, which isn't bad. Um, and so it's just, instead of trying to like do this diet, I'm just going to like focus on um, 
feel like I'm talking all over the place, but oh, prioritizing weight loss. So instead of like going into, instead of like focusing on muscle, I'm just going to focus on really in the end, the biggest thing for weight loss is eating less calories, taking in less calories than I'm burning. Sorry. Yeah. That's how you lose weight. Eat less, burn more. And you know, I have to just like make that priority. So now I'm just going to eat when I know I'm getting hungry and then um, just focus on getting my calories down. Like when I lost weight for the wedding for three weeks, I think I lost 15 pounds. I only ate once a day, but I ate like whatever I wanted pretty much. But I just ate once a day <clears throat> until I got full. And then I just used that to last me throughout the whole day. And um, so really it's just about taking in less calories, but um, so that's what I'm going to focus on. And I know what the portion sizes should be. I think it's important to know, you know, it, they say, I think carb size should be a fist protein, your palm, and then unlimited vegetables. And so that's just kind of what I'm going by. I'm just kind of making it up as I go with the diet. Um, I love nachos. So I do like protein heavy nachos because carbs are, they're not bad for you, but they're just so easy to overeat. That's why we all hate carbs because it's so easy to overeat them. And then they, when you overeat them, then it turns to fat and your calories go up. Um, so they're not the enemy, but it's just portion control. So, um, let me see. All right. Next thing. Oh, compassion. We kind of already talked about this one. Um, when, when I judge others, I'm judging myself. Um, and this has kind of helped like having compassion for others. The more I have compassion for others, the less self-conscious I am in the gym. Um, because when we're self-conscious in the gym, I learned that it means that we, we kind of have like spotlight thinking, like we think everybody's looking at us. We're afraid to do something wrong. But if my focus is on like, Oh, am I being courteous to this person? Am I smiling and acknowledging this person? You know, like sometimes some somebody just needs a, stra a smile from a stranger. Um, when I am thinking of others versus like worrying about myself, it, the gym is just an example, but that's all throughout the day and everyday life. When I am, have more concern from other people's feelings and well-being, not what they think of me, but just their feelings and trying to be kind to people the less self-conscious I feel because I'm, my attention is no longer on me. It's on, on others. And that's how, that's the kind of person I want to be. I want to be the kind of person that is thinking of others, not in like a self-sabotaging way where I just, you know, but in a way that's like just nice and compassionate to others. All right. Um, oh, and I've noticed this, like if I find myself like not wanting to be compassionate to others, or like if you've ever like saw a post from somebody and it was a good post that you didn't, like I didn't want to like them, like the post because of who posted or whatever. I find that that's usually because I have something that I don't like about myself. And that reminds me like to figure out what that is and change it because that's not the kind of person I want to be. That's like, um, to me, it's just kind of like, it makes me feel bad about myself um, when I'm like that. So that's kind of like one of my red flags. If I ever do something like that, it's like, okay, what am I feeling bad about myself that I don't want to do something nice for this person? Like, you know, it's, I mean, nothing huge, but you know what I mean? Um, okay. Uh, the next thing I learned, I think we're on number eight, maybe, or no, nine. I don't know. I'm sorry, y'all. There's 12 things. So we're on number 11. Um, this was a big one, listening to my soul. Um, I believe it's like the internal compass and it's always guiding us. It's always there. Um, and if I'm feeling good and I'm just like, just in a good energy and a good place, I think that's the soul telling me you're on the, you're on the right path. And if I'm feeling bad about something, whatever it is, if it's a negative emotion that I'm feeling, then it's telling me that I'm not on the right path. And that's always kind of been my internal internal compass. And I think I learned that on, um, the law of attraction movie. I know that sounds like hokey pokey, but it's like, it resonated with me. Cause I think it's true. Like when we're in a good 
a good energy state, it's we're on the right path when we're in a negative one, not on the right path. Same thing, like, you know, not liking someone's post. It's because something's, something's off here. Um, so I think that's a really good, really good compass. So that's something I'm also really learning, le working on is listening to my soul. And a lot of times I forget and then I have to like, really like stop, be quiet, like quiet myself and like pay attention to like figure out how am I feeling? Am I in a positive energy or am I in a negative energy? Um, and sometimes like it's easy to, again, rely on others to give us that positive feeling but you know, we have to, or I have to remember that it's, that's not the source of my good feeling. The source of my good feeling is, am I doing things like my opinion, you, my opinion is the most important one. If I'm happy and I feel good about a decision I'm making or something I'm doing, then good. But if I feel like off and that lets me know, like, mm, Sherlina, you need to change something or work on something with yourself. Um, but yeah, definitely a skill. I have to quiet the mind to really like figure out, like get to where I'm listening to my soul. And like, sometimes I, I haven't like, sometimes I forget to listen to my soul so much that sometimes something would, something good will happen. And I'll feel really good. And I'm like, Ooh, Hey, like I haven't been like really trying to listen to my soul. Cause I really think it, it guides us, um, and lets us know if we're on the right path. All right, the last one is gym 10 minutes a day. The gym is so good, not only for our health, like building muscle and shaping our body, but it's really a mental a mental health thing. And I always say this because it, it's been my anchor. The gym has been my anchor because no matter what, no matter how bad I'm doing, I can say like for a year now that I've been in the gym consist, I think it's a year. Um, that I've been in the gym consistently. I didn't go the three weeks I quit caffeine, but that's, you know, what I'm not worried about that. Um, but I started off with just going to the gym like 10 minutes a day. Oh, actually I started off not even going to the gym 10 minutes a day. I have an old video from I think 2015 where I started with just 10 minutes in, a day in my living room, stepping side to side. And I counted that as my workout. And it's still, again, just doing something to better myself that made me feel good about myself. I didn't realize that at the time. I realize it now. Um, but that's that's been my anchor. So from there, I built up to 20 minutes, I think. And then I started going in the gym 20 minutes. Even today, I didn't want to go to the gym. But I was like, oh, I need to go just for at least 10 minutes so I can check it off my list. And it's something I don't want to do that. I have to go do so that I feel better about myself and I can achieve this feeling that I'm working on and starting to feel. I want it to keep growing. I want to, I don't want to roll back down the hill. I want to keep building on top of it. So I went to the gym, lo and behold, had a great workout, really got in the zone. Um, not like my past workouts where I'm really hitting the training heavy, but good for right now where I'm like, I didn't want to go to the gym. Um, but I was in there for 30 minutes and sweat good, got my heart rate up good. Um, so the gym has really been my anchor. And I think, you know, I don't know, I guess not 10 minutes in the gym isn't really gonna like make me lose a bunch of weight, but it's my anchor to like, hey, this is something I don't wanna do and I'm doing it. And it just, it gives me a starting place to build on top of. Um, so that's been really important. Um, and then also just like finding stuff in the gym that make me love being in the gym, like motivational, um, motivational movies or videos. Um, Elio Kipchoge, he's a runner. He has like some good motivational videos. Eric Thomas, Joe Rogan, there's just like all kinds of like motivational videos and I need to actually stop and find some new ones because I love those. Those get me really going in the gym, make me push hard and then in turn feel really good about myself. Um, and of course I always do the thing where I'm like, I'll stay on here for five minutes and then I'll get stay longer, 15 seconds. All those little things just make me feel good. Um, and I just feel so like elated that I think this is, this is the key. This is where I'm about to have my turning point and we'll see, you know, April, 2023, like, did it work for me? Did not, you know, I think this is it. If not, then there's some other lesson that I have to learn and I'm still, you know, the, 
the two big things that I'm really like impounding the two biggest lessons right now is that the work is the, the, what is it? The work that I'm putting in is what is going to make me feel good about myself. And feeling good about myself is what I'm really searching for. Not that I don't feel good about myself right now, but like, you know, there's always, I know I can feel even better. I know that there's like more and I want to put more work in. Um, and also I already said this, but like really doing something today because if I don't do something today, then like five days will pass and I'll be like, dang, I haven't like done anything to like work on myself to achieve this goal. So I went to the gym, I'm making this video, like all these little things I have to keep doing to like make myself feel good. Um, what else? Oh, and celebrate the win. Like something so small as like being in the gym 10 minutes a day, like celebrate it. Like for me, I just, it counts and it builds. Um, let's see. Oh, so yeah, that's, that's really the biggest thing is just like letting the stuff be working hard towards myself and that self love by working hard on things and pushing myself. Um, and then the, the last thing is just my food control. Those two things, the hard work, self love actions, or however you want to call it, those, that one thing is number one. And then the second thing is just like portion control on my diet. And that's kind of falling in place with, you know, putting in the hard work, like, um, uh, like today I just, well, what did I do? Well, I guess part of it is like this morning I had breakfast. I had for breakfast, I had two pieces of gluten-free pizza and then I, but I didn't, I wanted, I was kind of wanting to eat a little bit more, but I was like, no, you know, let me go to the gym. Let me go do this. And then I, um, and then for lunch I had the quesadilla. Um, so like, what was my point? Oh, just portion control. I think that's, that's the portion control is kind of coming into play because when I think, if I'm thinking about having more food, I just have, to, I just kind of remember like the hard work is going to get me to this feeling I'm really searching for. And I know it because of past experiences, like that's really is what makes me feel good. And so it's making the portion control and the diet a lot easier. Um, so those are my two big things. And then um, I've got notes of other stuff I want to share with you guys, but that'll be for another video because this is going to be an hour long video. Um, so anyways, I hope this, I, I just hope that like anyone's going through the same things that I'm doing, if anything, you know, can resonate with you. This is, I think my big turning point and, you know, time will tell. And it doesn't mean that it's the end of my lessons or anything like that. I know I've got a lot more to learn. I always have stuff to learn, but I think I'm, I'm at a turning point. This is what I've been these are the lessons I've been really looking for and the, the lessons that I needed to learn. And, you know, I guess, yeah. So I just want to share with you guys. So we'll see. And thank you guys. If you made it through this whole video, thank you so much for listening so long. Um, let me know what you guys think and I'll talk to you guys later. Mwah.